All right, all right, party people. This your man, Griff. Let's go ahead on and hop on this thing. Look, I'm going to try to be as concise and straight to the point as possible. I want to hear your comment. I want to read your comments and see what you, well, I guess you could say, hear what you have to say in the comment section below. Um, I think y'all going to like this. Um, feel free to just share. Ask questions, whatever. Okay. Um, this topic I've been looking into doing for a while, for several months. Now, um, I think if y'all recall, and I'm going to pull it up, and I was trying to pull everything up that I wanted to bring and forgot about this one thing. And uh, let me pull it up real quick. Um, this subject. Uh, see if I can. Yeah. All right. I found it. I found it. I found it. All right. So let's do this. All right. So about a year ago, I did this video, March 2021. As you see, has the notary training become, has notary training become get rich quick network marketing? And I talked about this because of what I was seeing from a lot of people just hopping out here all of a sudden and the link to that video is going to be in the description all of a sudden out of nowhere they're like hey i'm the next big thing you know what i'm saying i'm i, I can teach you everything you need to know and i was concerned back then and since that time period it has increased greatly of all the people jumping out here thinking that oh i can train notaries i can help them and i can, really it's not even that i can make money let's just put it this straight i can make money so there is a thing called what i believe and i'm seeing the notary pyramid scheme of bringing people in before you even get warmed up in this business they got you pushing things and selling things and doing things that has nothing to do with the real reason and intent why you came into the business. Um, and that's where the problem comes in. So I'm gonna talk a little bit, sort of, I'm just shooting from the hip here, you know, so I might be a little all over the place, but I'm gonna try to do everything I can to bring it back in. Couple of things here. With the notary pyramid scheme and with any pyramid scheme, they always create a problem. So the first thing they're gonna do is they're going to create a problem, whether real or fake. It's going to be a problem. And the reason why I say real or fake, because sometimes there's a real problem, but that problem doesn't necessarily affect you. It's not a problem that is touching you or even bothering you, but they make you feel that it's a problem that you are going to face or maybe your, your, your family members are going to face. So you need to get on it and you need to do something to fix this problem. Some examples of the problem is it can be culturally, it could be um, based on race, it could be based on economics, all kinds of stuff. You know, one of the things that people can do is like, hey, you want to make money to take care of your family. You want to do these this thing, you know, you want to make them happy and buy them things but you can't because you don't have access to the knowledge that other people has access to and you was, and it was withheld from you. And therefore, since it was withheld from you, you, you can't be all who you can be, but if you just had access, you could now come over here with me, pay me, and I will give you access to said knowledge. Sometimes the ask the price of admission, is high sometimes it's somewhat reasonable for your economic position in life and sometimes it's very very low 
to where you're like, wow. And they're like, look, hey, I've made my money off of this. So I'm just trying to give you access. So you look, here's here it is for five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars. You just come in and make your make up your mind. So you come in and then it's like. They tell you just enough. They use marketing and psychology techniques and tactics. And then it's like, OK, I need to know more. I think I really want to do this. And they're like, well, to get further beyond where you're currently at, that's going to be more money. OK, that's going to be more money for this course that I put together and this material that I put together and, and everything. And, you know, now, if you really want exclusive time with me, then it's going to cost you this much. So they create a problem and they say. They have you pay for the solution. So you want the solution to this problem. Here's the, here's the solution to the problem. Access to information a lot of times is free. But what you can get help with is how to implement it and how to do it. Understand, you know, and. And in some cases, that's what you need. But then what is it that they're trying to teach you and help you to know and to learn in order for you to rectify the problem that they said exists? That's the question. So what they end up doing is once you pay for the solution, then you end up telling others about the solution and then they pay for the solution. So now and you say, well, that's 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 sort of like a network marketing scheme. So they got the one person at the top. Then they got a group of people who are their core folk that's running things and they're telling everybody, hey, man, look, this guy, this lady, they helped me. I was down and out. I didn't know what I was going to do. And they gave me information that nobody else would give me. And that information set me on six figures, set me on seven figures. Look, I'm telling you, if you're struggling, whatever this you need to be with this person, you need to get in here. And then you give them the money and, and then next thing you know, you're paying for the solution and then you go and tell somebody else. And the sad part is that you'll tell somebody before it ever even materializes for you. Or even if it does materialize, you will tell people about the solution before it materializes consistently. So after that, you go and now you end up being a pusher for someone else's solution and you're constantly telling everybody, hey, come meet me here. Come hop on this live. Come hop on that thing. And you're constantly pushing people to say, hey, look, I don't I can't look, I can't tell you, but he can tell you. And that's the same thing that the person who told brought you in told you, look, I don't look, I don't know how to explain it. But if you come on here, look, it's only for cost going to cost you this much. You will get everything you need to know. Then you go tell somebody and so on and so on and so on. Now, here's the problem within the notary world. You never really get to work in the industry. You're pushing all these products. You're pushing all these ideas. You're pushing all of these streams of income. But you never really get to work in the notary industry like you said you wanted to. You, you, you rose your hand to be commissioned as a notary, but next thing you know, you ain't notarized anything because now they got you building, putting out journals and, and uh, well, you know, like notary journals, motivational journals, daily work journals. Um, I got to go see my wife and kids journals. They got you doing all kind of, you know, selling stuff for um, notary supplies, all these things that you're doing training company training materials speaking trying to get speak speaking engagements some conferences not all conferences some conferences are just designed so you can they can sell stuff you got all of this stuff you know what i'm saying i mean now you got conferences where they're trying to help you and educate you and expose you to people who have stuff but then you have conferences where they're they're really only there to sell you stuff okay like the real estate investing ones, you know, you go to them and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to learn some stuff. And they tell you a few things, but to be honest, they keep, you know, you keep seeing these people going into the back. I'm like, okay, why are they going in the back? Because they're going back there. Some of them are plants and they're going in the back. Like they're going to buy 
this here thing, and then they come back with this little folder and stuff. And you're like, man, what's that folder? Like, man, that's a shiny folder. And then you're like, hey, what's going on? Oh, they back there um, signing up for such and such and such. And then the speaker like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't mind the people that's getting up there. There are people we've talked to already and they wanted to come get some more information before making a decision to sign up for our other level of, of training. So that's all you see. You see the scam? That's what they do. And within the notary world, these some of these same tactics are happening and you have to be mindful of them. You've got to be aware of them because there's some slick, slick, slick people out here and they know how to diffuse and make you think that they're just so lovable and cuddly and they got your best interest. But all the while, they got their hands five finger, ten finger deep into your pockets, bank accounts and everything else. And you have to take responsibility to make say, OK, wait a minute. Why am I in this business and what it's about? The other side of the house is that and as you saw the title, the notary pyramid scheme and the notary boule. The boule is this aristocratic type of group that sort of tries to be the gatekeeper of all things notary. They try to push out certain people. They don't want you going and getting training from certain people. The good and the people who they're trying to keep you away from are people who can really help you. They can really help you move forward in this business, but they got something negative to say about them. They're attacking them. Or they tell you, <laughs> well, if you're going to hang with them, don't hang with me. Don't come over here. Don't talk to us, dot, dot, dot. So you have to be careful. It's like, okay, why are they attacking them? You know, one time I was at this place and, and I had a book from this one particular person. And a guy walked by and he was like, don't read that book. Don't, I don't, mm, you don't want to read that book. And I'm like, okay, why not? You, you, you don't want to read that. Because that person was speaking something that he didn't believe in. That's all. And it wasn't that the person was speaking something wrong. It's just that he didn't believe in it because to have somebody in his organization reading that book meant he couldn't keep control of them. So in order to keep control of you, the notary boule has to make other people look bad. They got to make other notaries look bad whether that person's a notary trainer or not they have to make other notaries look bad and make you feel bad about going to them for help and they're constantly saying no you need to come to us come to me so they're trying to be the gatekeeper and have everything come through them but the problem is most of them don't have enough experience in the industry to be considered a true leader in it but they want you to come to them and they're upset that either just a certain group of people or maybe a certain race of people or a certain sex of people or whatever are the top dogs. And they really don't want to be the top dog. They just want the top dog money. They just want the money that they think the top dogs are making. Well, they look at them and they're like, well, man, they making Sorry about that. They're making all kind of bank. They're making all kind of money left and right. I want that money. Not go out and earn their own, but I want their money because the, if I can move them out of the way, then everybody will come to me and then I can get more. I can get their money. Mm -hmm. So somebody's offering you something for, say, $500. It's a really good training course, $500. The notary boule people will tend to have you think that, OK, if you come over here, you can get what I you can get the same thing for a much cheaper cost. But when you really look at it, and I said this on Instagram a couple of days ago before this video here, you're paying them a cheaper cost. So it's normally 500. They're charging you 100. But here's the thing. By the time you finish getting all the ancillary accessories, maybe that's one of the same word. By the time you finish getting all the accessories for that, that's associated with that training guess what you then end up take that down you end up then <laughs> you end up then paying more 
than what you would have paid before or even the same. You're spending the same money just a different way. Because think about it. If they're jealous that somebody is making all this money and then they're charging you a lot less, the goal is to get as much money out of you as possible. They're not going to walk away from the other $400 that you're paying or you could potentially pay to Griff or to somebody else. I don't have a $500 course, okay? But you, you, you know, let's say my, my notary success is $150. Well, we can do it for $35. I can teach you the same thing Griff teaching you for $35. I can get you access to the same information that Griff has for $35. But then they're charging, you know, you mean to tell me you're going to miss out on all that other money? You're going to miss out on all that other money. The other, what, $135 or something like that. No, they're not. They're just going to get it from you. They're going to extract it from you in a different way. They're not leaving anything on the table. They want the full amount because they know it's worth that or more. So they're going to have to find a way. So if I can initially get you to drop a little sprinkle of your money and then, and they're in it for the long game. So next thing you know, it's like three, four months down the road. Oh, we have an update to that. Update to what? Yeah, update to the thirty-five dollar thing that we sh you paid for. We have an update now that has a lot more information in it, and it'll be a hundred and thirty-five more dollars. That's one fifty. Yeah. And then when you look at what they're offering and versus what I'm offering, so now I'm paying one fifty. I could have just paid Griff one fifty and got the same thing right off the bat instead of having. You see what I'm saying? That's what the game is, y'all. So they're trying to create this division amongst the notaries and to make people feel bad about not being with them and not spending money with them. It's wrong for you to spend money over there with those people or that person. You're grown. You spend money wherever you want. You just got to deal with the fallout if it's bad. But that's why I always encourage you to do what? Your due diligence. Now, I want to go over a few quick things here before we end this here. Um, and the links to these, to all of this is going to be in the description. It's very important that you pay attention to what's going on out here. And, and to be honest, I could go much deeper than what I have. Um, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to keep make this a two-hour <laughs> video i'm not i'm not going to make it a two-hour video that's why i'm giving a a really really brief overview and just giving y'all just the highlights um i may go deeper but i think y'all get where i'm going with everything that i'm saying you it's and this here is not indicative of any one person it could be anybody but you need to understand the behaviors to watch out for so if you see these behaviors, then you need to be mindful of it. And I want to talk about some other behaviors here. So this here's one. One of the other behaviors is what they call deceptive business practice. OK, and they got and they actually have deceptive business practice lawyers. And this is from New York, New Jersey. OK, so I'm going to just do some reading real here. It says most business owners have good intentions. They are truly passionate about creating a product and providing a service that satisfies customers' needs, you know, satisfy customers' needs better than any alternative. However, even good business owners don't always hire the right people and don't have full control over how professionals they hire use their authority. As a result, these professionals may use deceptive business practices to earn your business. Sales representatives are especially notable for this, but sometimes the entire company is on board with the decept with its deceptive practices. When this happens, you need an experienced lawyer. Dot dot dot. Unfair practices can prompt you to feel the need for legal counsel. All of that. Understanding them, a deceptive business practice is any activity that is used by a business or individual in an attempt to mislead or lure a consumer into purchasing a good or service that relies 
on some form of fraud or misleading information. In some cases, simply perforating and straight exaggeration do not rise to the level of deception, to the level of a deceptive business practice. Example, New York, you know, New York's best coffee. However, when a marketing or advertising claim straight out lies or make deceptive or false claims regarding a product, this type of deceptive business practice is illegal. So what you need to understand is hit the wrong button, y'all. <laughs> what you need to understand is that people will just straight out lie to you and make you feel that something is missing in your life and you need what they have and they will they will skew the truth they will give you just enough truth it's hard out there isn't it yeah <laughs> it is hard out there but at this point in time in my life it's not hard for me but you never know what might happen true but i know what i'm gonna do if the never if the unknown does happen i'm gonna face it and i'm gonna deal with it and i'm gonna conquer it but you need some help doing that. And for $39.50, I can provide you that help. This is what they're doing. And they make you feel like, you know, was, you know, you, you just never know. I'm telling you, you gotta watch out for this economy. You know, these people are not for look, they ain't for us, brother man, sister girl. They not for us. You know, they don't like our kind. And they make you feel like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. They don't like us. You just never know. They might turn on you. So they do all of these things to make you feel that you need to take action against the injustice that hasn't even happened to you or it happened to them or they claim it did. But do you even really know? <laughs> Examples of deceptive business practices goes on and says, Deceptive business practices can involve several different types of marketing or advertising or simply failing to provide a good or service, this good or service promise examples, breach of an existing contract, inducing a breach, meaning they're forcing you to breach and break the contract, fraud, predatory pricing. That's a big one. False representation of a good or service as new or original when it is instead altered, used, reclaimed, reconditioned, deteriorated, stolen, <laughs> false representation of benefits, quality characteristics, of you know, certifications, approval, false stating, falsely stating that a repair or replacement will be needed when it's not, advertising goods and services without enough stock, without enough intent to sell them exactly as advertised. That's odometer stuff for a car. <clears throat> this one here falsely representing a good or service as that of another counterfeit goods and services. And that's what's going on with the notary. They're advertising their marketing stuff as if it's theirs when they stole it from somebody else. Fraudulently claiming that a good or service has a sponsor approval or certification it doesn't have at all. And again, the links are in the description. It talks about your consumer rights, all of that. So, and then here's another part. Most people consider unfair and deceptive practices <clears throat> to be the same thing. However, unfair practices are actually more severe. Deceptive practices generally involve misleading a customer into believing something is something that isn't true through misrepresentation or admission. In contrast, unfair practices are likely to cause or do co or do cause substantial damages to consumers in form of financial loss or physical injury for a practice to qualify as unfair the benefits of the competition or consumer cannot outweigh the downside so you have to really 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 be careful so like this here was talking about you know some people act you know i think some of the people who are doing this stuff used to be in multi-level marketing and some of the things that they're doing is very, very similar. So you can read this about multi-level marketing, the grand, you know, the pinnacle of pyramid schemes and stuff, but here's some of the qualities or things you need to look out for low or no, or low quality product or service. 
outrageous and unfounded product claims. Look, you can make all this money as a notary. You can do this. You can do that. Then, you know, some of it's unfounded just because the percentage of people who are actually saying that they're making all of this money versus the number of notaries, I don't think warrants even 1%. Okay. Outrageous claims and unfounded product, outrageous and unfounded product claims, high pressure sale tactics, pressure to buy or stock inventory, poor company communications. And y'all know that's a big one because y'all can't even get in contact with folk who said that they supposed to be there to help y'all and everything. So you can't even get in contact with anybody. So sorry about that y'all thought that was my wife but that's not her um poor company communication expensive ongoing training or other business items <laughs> expensive ongoing training or other business items that's a huge one they're constantly you gotta constantly keep being trained and trained and trained I mean, it's like, how much training do I need to have before I can be considered a valid, solid notary to do loan closings? How much training do I need? I took training from this person. You're telling me it's not good enough. Then I take training from you, but then they're saying that's not good enough. So I take training from them. When is it good enough? That is the question. That is the true question that I have. When is enough enough what do i have to do to prove to everybody that i know what i'm doing when i'm sitting at the table doing a loan closing you're not giving me a loan closing because you're saying i don't have experience so i take five trainings and you're saying none of the trainings that i took give you confidence that i know what i'm doing so I'm saying, give me a shot. You're saying, no, my boss says, no, they don't want to work with new notaries. How am I supposed to prove to you that I know what I'm supposed I'm doing? Well, if you take this training, so I take a six training, then you're saying, okay, you can be on board of with us, but then you don't have any orders to give to me. Or, well, I'm just going by what the platform does, where you send it out through the platform and Fred, Beth, Becky, Beth, and all of them, they take the order before it ever gets to me. Oh, well, I'm sorry. You know, hey, next better look next time. No, I just spent this amount of money to do this training so I can be on your platform so I can get up the chain and you still tell me I can't do it. I still can't get an order from you. So how do I prove to you that I know what I'm doing? What do you need from me? And everybody keeps saying you need training and they never define what type of training, who should train me, none of that. Is the training from that person recognized by everybody as good and solid? No, the reason why, because from me all the way up to the big boys, none of us are notary trainers approved. We are people who have learned some information and taken time out to share it. That is it. The only true trainers you have for us being certified by any notary group are with the NNA and I believe the American Association for Notaries, them people, all the, both of those two entities. Other than that, we're just focused on our own trying to help people. Whew, that was a serious tirade there. <laughs> then it goes into poor, better business rating, deceptive advertising practices, cryptic job interview, if that's applicable, unsettling feel, feeling you know, um, and then a whole bunch of other stuff to consider. Um, then this here is seven traits scam artists have in common. Likeable, confident personality. That sounds like me. <laughs> Exorbitantly expensive coaching programs. Y'all know, y'all, y'all figure it out. I'm just sharing with y'all what the world is saying the business world is saying that you need to look out for. Lots of unspoken and unhappy, outspoken and I don't know why I said un, a lot of outspoken and unhappy clients. That's why some of these people, they quick to give money back. I give you money back. You can't complain. Here's your money back. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I really like your program. Here's your money back. 
okay, but I was just wanting to talk. No, mm, 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 mm. I give you money back, gone. <laughs> That's the, the hush money. Selling one solution while using another. I'm still sort of trying to figure that out. But it says most scam artists sell one solution while using. Oh, okay. While you, for example, using a product launch to sell an AdWords course. Okay, finally it just clicked in. So they're using selling one solution. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> I was hoping my voice wouldn't go on me. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Whew. Selling one solution while using another. Okay, so you're trying to launch a product in order to sell something else. So here's here's my, you know, here's my, you know, um my course on loan closing or I'm going to teach you I'm going to I have a course on um uh, Canva, but it's tied into hey, also you can get this course on how to do loan closings for 35% off. <clears throat> So they're constantly trying to sell one thing by using another. It clicked in. It just clicked in. Failure to deliver. High polished marketing combined with unpolished or unexistent products. Stage selling at big events. Many scam artists pitch their programs via seminars and other live events. They may speak. They may speak dozens of times a year because of their ability to sell from the stage. This is what I was talking about. Now, this doesn't apply to everybody. OK, so there are some, you know, like there are some conferences that are coming up. Those operate different than than what scammers do. OK, so not everybody who has a conference where people talk about stuff is scamming. OK. They're not. Most scammers have all of this going on at one time. You can't be a true scammer if you only got one or two of these popping. You got to have basically all of it going at the same time or in stages. So scammers, and I've said a lot here. I've said a lot in these 32 minutes. I've said a lot. But the bottom line is this. And again, I could go on and on and on. And, and no, I'm not trying to call out anybody. I'm just telling you what of the behaviors and the things that I look for, because these are things that I look for and others look for. Okay, that's a scam. This is a scam. Okay, wait a minute. It may not be a scam, but you ain't telling me the full truth. And hence, to me, the moment I see that you're not trying to tell me the full truth or something, to me, you're scamming. Because you want me to come in with no knowledge no full true knowledge of what you're trying to offer. You just want me to believe you based off of a 15 second commercial you did because you're cute, because you got good looking, you know, your good looking hair, you got cars and all this vacation stuff, all these aesthetics things. And you're like, because I'm doing this and because I'm living my best life, you need to pay me $500 and you can live your best life too. And matter of fact, we're going to discount it today, 75% off. Just come on in, y'all, okay? And when I get back from vacation, I'm going to show you how to do it too, and you can come with me on my next vacation. That's what they're doing, okay? These are the things that they're doing, and I'm like, I don't understand why people can't see the, the scam, why you can't see what's going on, and what do you need to have happen in order for you to like, oh, okay, let me let me take a little another look at this and make sure that this is something that I want in my life. Nobody is doing that. Everybody's just like, OK, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to figure out. Why you don't see it? It's there. They're not answering your phone calls. They won't email you back. They won't text you back. And all they say it is give me more money. Give me more money. Well, look, I'm busy. If you look, if you look, just cash at me a hundred dollars. When I see that, I'll promise I'll make time for you. You see what I'm saying? This is what's going on. So if you got any questions or comments, please put them in the um, chat below. Um, I think you will. You will be much better 
if you take what I'm saying, look at the information, study for yourself and say, okay, how legit is this person? And a person could be a thousand percent legit and what they're saying is true. The problem is, does it apply to you where you're at? Does it apply to you where you're at? If it does, then great. If it doesn't, then you move on to the next thing. That's all. That's all you really got to do. So I hope you learned something tonight. I believe you did. And again, this was really just an overview of what I could really go deeper into um, concerning the notary pyramid scheme and the notary boule. And these are real things. Even though you may not see it yet, you're not seeing it yet, but I'm telling you, they out there. And in some cases, it's not who you think it is. Actually, it is, but and then there's others, <laughs> to be honest with you. It is, and then there's other. Oh, and let me, that's what I want. Let me end with this. A lot of times, the top person or the or the secondary person let me let me help y'all out with this here uh, i want to help y'all out with uh, here it is sometimes that top person or you know sometimes that top person or their secondary persons are very, very mean and nasty toward people. Ladies, be mindful of guys who are very disrespectful to you. Gentlemen, be very mindful of men who are disrespectful to the women in their lives or around them. Be, be mindful of women that are at the top or in that little chain who are disrespectful. In other words, be mindful of anybody who's really being disrespectful. <clears throat> but a lot of these pyramid schemes have men running them sometimes behind the curtain and all of that. And they can be very, very disrespectful and mean and condescending and nasty toward women. And you need to make sure that you aren't caught up into that because they're going to be leaving you holding a, the bag and it's not a bag full of money. So you take it however you want. I'm telling you from experience. And just because you don't see it, just because you haven't felt it, don't mean that it's not true. But others have seen it and felt it and have informed me that, yeah, there's some folk out there that are very mean and disrespectful. And when you have somebody that's like that, somebody that act like they can't communicate with you or they're above you. You know, I've been around people that, they act, I mean, in the same room with them and they won't even speak to me. They won't even speak to me, won't sit, won't even look my way. I can be three feet from them and they won't say a word. And I'll make eye contact with them or try to, and they do everything they can to avoid me. And when I come across somebody like that, I don't mess with them. You try to talk to them. You try to just acknowledge their presence, not even trying to get into a deep conversation, just being respectful and just acknowledging their presence. And they do everything they can to avoid you. They don't even, because you say, well, did you speak? They don't even give you a chance to speak to them because they don't want to speak to you. When you see people like that, you don't need to be with them. When you see people who are doing people who you're cool with like that, you don't need to be with them. So if I see you treating one of my one of one of my my um homies like that, if I see you treating Q like that and Q ain't never done anything to you, or Mathen or Caprinus or Gannon, you might as well hang it up. I'm done with you. You better give me a real solid reason why, and it can't be I just don't like him. No, that ain't good enough. Did he do something to you? Uh, no. Okay, then. Let's, let's, then let's do this thing together because he's a part of my crew. 
I'm a part of his. It's that simple. Don't respect my wife. I really ain't got nothing to do with you. Don't respect my kids. I really don't have anything to do with you. It's that simple, people. Don't lower your standards just trying to get some money. The money ain't that good for you to let you to let somebody who you don't know disrespect people who you care about or somewhat are cool with. There's some things I will say right now, but I'm get myself in trouble. All I can say is this. Don't mess with somebody I care about. You better hope somebody else deals with you before I deal with you. It's just that simple. Y'all have a good one. Peace.